Hi, uh, I'm Dr. Ying Hong Wang, or I go by Mimi Wang. I'm a gastroenterologist at the University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center. I joined MD Anderson about seven and a half years ago. Currently, I serve as a director of fecal microbiota transplantation and also director of inflammatory bowel disorders. At the same time, I have been serving as the chair of our institutional uh, in, uh, immunotherapy toxicity working group uh, for the past four years or so. So I hope to uh, spend a few minutes to talk about the research project that we have been doing at MD Anderson uh, in terms of managing the cancer immunotherapy-induced GI toxicity. As we know that Nobel Prize was awarded to the checkpoint mechanism uh, that was about almost a decade ago that leads to a development of a new family of cancer treatment called immune checkpoint inhibitors. And that has a very high uh, efficacy in cancer eradication. However, at the same time, it does cause this off-target inflammatory damage. And GI toxicity, especially the colitis, is one of the most common encountered IRAEs that cause morbidity and even mortality in extreme cases. This has become a major hurdle in the current cancer care that causes frequent interruption of cancer therapy and also negatively impact the cancer outcome. We have a very urgent and critical demands to address this issue. Unfortunately, for moderate and severe colitis, there are not many treatment options uh, in the current practice. Even though there are multiple uh, retrospective studies that has already been published, especially from my group for the past uh, six years or so, we published over 60 articles uh, on this particular topic. And what we have realized is that the main first-line treatment is immunosuppression, including the corticosteroid and the biologic agents such as infliximab and vedolizumab. They have a relatively high efficacy. We're referring to about 80 to 85 percent to keep the patient in uh, clinical remission or at least achieve clinical response. However, they are associated with certain complications, especially in, in this vulnerable patient population, such as infections and also the concern of counteracting effect um, that may potentially impact the cancer outcome. So we hope to um, explore the options that have a much safer as efficacious and rapid onset and natural way to treat this condition. So we have developed this fecal transplantation as a normal treatment since 2017 as the first treatment ever in the universe for immunotherapy-induced colitis, and we achieved a big success. Um, our first two cases has been published in Nature Medicine in 2018, and our extended case series for the first 12 patients has been published in Science Translational Medicine in 2022. In those case series, the preliminary data has already shown that we can achieve the clinical success of between 80 to 85 percent. And also, we have identified some preliminary information on the signature of microbiome composition that could be beneficial for immunotherapy colitis. And this has been reflected by the alteration of the immune infiltration on the tissue level that we believe is the a game-changing kind of steps from the microbiome alteration. Currently, we have two clinical trials on fecal transplant that has been actively enrolling patients at MD Anderson. And we are going to give presentation tomorrow uh, at the morning session for immunotherapy therapeutics to present our data. We have enrolled 59 patients for refractory cases and 12 patients at the front line. And we have shown a consistent high efficacy of 80 to 85 percent with very favorable side effects profile. We are very excited and optimistic that fecal transplant may become a future standard of care for this challenging medical condition. At the same time, we have a randomized clinical trial at MD Anderson that compared the efficacy and safety between the infliximab and vedolizumab, which are most commonly used the biologic agents for immunotherapy colitis. Previously, we have published retrospective studies uh, in 2012, uh, 2022 with uh, Sloan Kettering that have shown the high efficacy about 80 to 85 percent of success rate of between these two medications. However, there's no high quality prospective studies that now we try to address that with uh, the randomized um, two arm studies uh, to be able to share the community in oncology and also GI how to best manage this colitis condition. Thank you. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Onka Daily on YouTube.
hit the bell icon to stay update.